It's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. If we can slow it down, pause, connect, and make the relationship a priority, even if it's just for 15 seconds of kissing your partner or giving your kiddo a quick wrestle and a tickle, it makes such a difference. And now here's the stars of our show, my mum and dad. It's the final day of uh, autumn. I nearly forgot what what, uh, season we were in. Final day of autumn. Tomorrow it's winter. Has it felt like autumn? Well, it's unfair of us to say that because we're now living on the coast <laughs> in Queens, tropical <laughs> Queensland, and no, it hasn't. It feels like uh, it doesn't. Well, it doesn't feel like winter yet. And how good is that? That's why we live here. We were walking at the beach the other night, and it was eighteen degrees. Walking along in t-shirt, t shirt, t shorts, t <laughs> shirt and shorts, feet in the water. I would normally be whinging at 18 degrees in any other location that we've lived at. Beautiful. But it is just so temperate. It's beautiful. So, last day of autumn. Winter kicks off tomorrow. This is the Happy Families Podcast. I'm Dr. Justin Coulson. I'm here with Kylie, mum to our six kids. And today we're having a conversation about some habits of healthy relationships. I mean, this podcast could go on for days. We could talk about so many things. Uh, I've done webinars about this. You and I have done workshops about it, Better Together. It's available on the Happy Families store. But today I thought we'd talk about some things that we don't talk about all that often that are instantly practical tremendously helpful and that people can start using to make their relationships better with their kids and even with their partners or spouses starting right now. I've got a long list because I can't help myself. Well, I'm having a little chuckle because I've got a list in front of me. It's not oh, your list. Oh, <laughs> what, what's your list? <laughs> but Miss Hay gave me her, her to-do list for today. Oh, so this isn't like a healthy relationships <laughs> list. This is just Well, a- I think in her mind it is about healthy relationships. <laughs> so, so Emily, eight years old, she's got a to-do list. What, you're laughing about it. What's on the list? Well, there's haircut is the first thing. Sure. Then we've got bowling. Right. B-O-L-W-L-I-N-G. Bowling. Sure, we can go bowling. And then we've got pedicure. <laughs> right. Pe- really? P-E-D-I-C-U-O-R. Pedicure. Hey, she did pretty well. She did amazing. And each one of them has a picture next to it. <laughs> right. So are you, are you taking- And I'm just laughing because I don't know where she got this idea from. Are but- you ta- taking her bowling bo- bo- <laughs> this afternoon and then for a petty? Is that the is that the plan? Well, maybe that's her hint that she needs some mummy-daughter time. I'm in for a pedicure. Help me to understand because I'm a male and I've never had one. What is a pedicure? Do you know, you need to go and have one. I walk through I ne- the shopping centres. Yes, and there's often more men sitting in those chairs than females. Uh, so what is a pedicure? They... Get rid of all of the dead skin around your toes and oh. on your heels. Oh, that's disgusting. It is. And it feels amazing oh, at does the it? other end. When, when I think of a pedicure, now that you've said that, as soon as you said it, I, I was thinking of those barley sucking fish that you put your feet into the tank and they, <laughs> they suck all the dead skin off. Is, is that not a cheaper, easier way to get a pedicure? <laughs> that's pretty gross. I, I hated that. <laughs> I hated that. I'll never do that again. So if it feels anything like that, the pedicure. They'll even paint your toes if you ask nicely. The fish. Let's um, move on. I'm so sorry. That was not even funny. The habits of healthy relationships is what we want to talk about today. Uh, Seven ideas that I've got that can help your family to be happier. And they're not the usual sort of things that I talk about in the podcast or in our webinars or anything like that, but they are all science supported. And, And frankly, I think that these ideas can really make a difference for any parent who wants their family to be happier. Well, I'm interested in number one. Number one is make time. Make time for who? Uh, make time for your relationships. Uh, I've kind of been on a bit of a thing over the last couple of months on the podcast. I've been really hammering this a lot. Uh, we've got to put our phones down. So this th- this concept of time confetti has really captured me. I love the I love the metaphor. I love the visual image of time literally falling in tiny little pockets here, there, and everywhere, like confetti falls when you throw confetti in the air. Time confetti is that it's that two minutes here and that four minutes there and that eight minutes over there. We kind of go, oh, I can't do anything with this time. And so we stare at our phone. And I'm increasingly convinced more than ever that it's those little moments where we're staring at our phone where we're missing out on relationship connection. Is that why you've been kissing me so much lately? Every time you're on your phone, I, I kiss you. <laughs> you've noticed. <laughs> if I see you on the phone... I come over and kiss you. Oh, well, I'm not getting off my phone anytime soon then. <laughs> no, no, the idea is get off the phone and come and connect <laughs> with me. 
Um, you're getting the wrong message. I'm reinforcing the wrong thing. Is that what you're saying? Maybe. There's that three minutes of time confetti there where you can stare at your phone and catch up on the next three minutes of whatever stupidity you're watching on whatever streaming thing you're on. Or you can come and squeeze your partner. I haven't had a three-minute kiss. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Let's not go too far. I, we can't divulge all of the details of how the Coulsons operate. <laughs> uh, but, but what can you do in that three minutes with your kiddo? How can you engage with them? I mean, because the problem is, as our kids are growing up as well, they use that same three minutes of time confetti to stare at a screen or to gaze off into the distance and do nothing. And, and it's not good for our relationships. It's not good for connection. I think at the heart of... At the heart of the very best relationships is time. There's that cheesy phrase that I use all the time in my workshops to a child, love is spelled, T-I-M-E. Connection is the currency of relationships. We've got dollars that run our economy. It's connection, that sense of feeling seen, heard and valued that makes our relationships the healthiest. And when we're staring at screens or when we're so caught up in all the stuff that we've got to do, and I'm not denying that stuff has to be done, But if we can slow it down, pause, connect, and make the relationship a priority, even if it's just for 15 seconds of kissing your partner or giving your kiddo a quick wrestle and a tickle, it makes such a difference. Well, number two is not one of my strong points. You've put down laugh. <laughs> yes. Did but, you, did, but I did practice the fake smiling. Yeah, yeah. well, well that's true. And, and, and it's getting better. <laughs> did you know that when we look at what's called sociometric studies, sociometric studies, uh, basically, when we're looking at how popular people are, we have a look at who likes who in the zoo. And we usually do these sociometric studies in school classrooms, work out who the most popular kids are. There's two qualities that make people popular. One of them is fear. So the, the really popular kids, the ones with all the status, uh, they're popular because people are scared of them. They've got that Machiavellian tendency. They treat people badly and, that, and therefore people are drawn to them because they know that if they can be on their good side, they'll be popular. And if they're on the bad side, they're in trouble. So they're drawn to them because of that popularity, that power that they have. But there's another group of people who are popular for a different reason. And they're not as popular as the, the cool kids. They're popular in a different way. They're popular because they're liked. And do you know who's most liked? Fun people. People who had, yeah, people who know how to have fun and know how to laugh. Like we've got six daughters, and one of them is a compulsive laugher. She's laughing all the time. She has so many annoying habits. She is so irresponsible. She does so many things that drive us up the wall, and yet she is consistently the kid that all of us enjoy spending time with. You, me, and all of the other kids, all of her siblings, because she's so much fun. She knows how to laugh. And I think that's why everyone loves me so much as well. <laughs> I can't believe you just mocked me as I said that. But laughter. Laughter is such it's, – it's, it's such a wonderful lubricant for our relationships. Well, I did get you a little while ago. Yeah. You were very, very cranky uh, as me? you were staring at your screen. Me? And oh, so I'm cranky and I'm on a screen. You, that's two black were. marks against my name. And you have this habit of adding lots of words to things. <laughs> right. I know what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. So lots and lots of years ago, when we first got married, right. you decided that I needed a pet name. Oh, I can't believe you're disclosing this. And you decided to call me not one, but four names all in one. Well, that's because not one, there was not one that was enough to describe how I felt about you. You're so good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, bit sappy, but you call me your beautiful, darling, angel, sweetheart. Uh huh. That's even how you are in my phone. Yes. Yep. And that's what and, your and that's what your number plate is. My <laughs> number plate now. I actually have the acronym B D A S. I have to say that most people don't know that it's beautiful, darling, angel, sweetheart. <laughs> however, and it has a completely different. <laughs> think about it, folks. B D A S. Just think about it for a second. Unfortunately, <laughs> but. As you were staring at your scream and getting very cranky, I realised that there's a bit of a habit going on here because you don't just say one bad word, you say it, all of them together. I don't swear. Let's No, you clear. don't. So you said, gosh, damn it, flame and hell, all in one hit. <laughs> and as soon as I made that point to you, what happened? I think I laughed. You laughed. <laughs> so it's like, so powerful, isn't it? Laughter it just, is a lubricant that makes relationships happy and healthy, so long as it's kind and, and directed to, 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 to goodness. <laughs> Hey, we, number three. Well, we've talked way too long. We've got oh. seven of these to get through, but we've got to take a quick break. After the break, uh, number three. 
If you have more than one child, there's a simple truth. They're going to fight, they're going to compete, and they're going to have relationship troubles. But the real secret isn't how to stop the fighting, it's how to teach them kindness. The Teaching Kids Kindness webinar will help you to do just that, but also help them build lifelong sibling bonds that lead to lifelong friendships. Check out Teaching Kids Kindness at happyfamilies.com.au. It's the Happy Families Podcast, the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. And I am thinking that number three might be honouring the other. Yeah. And what I mean by honouring the other, because you've seen my list, obviously, Mrs. Coulson, is um, when when we honour the other, we only speak well of them, even when they're not present. So I hear this all the time. I hear it from men when I'm on the bike and I'm riding with a bunch of guys. I hear it from women who tell me that when all the girls get together, this is what they talk about, that they often will use the opportunity away from their partner to bag their partner out, to say horrible things about their spouse, to say, oh, they always do this, or gosh, they're always this or that or the other. Uh, There's nothing less healthy for a relationship than speaking ill of one another, whether they're that person is present or not. There is power in honouring the other person, in only speaking well of them. If they're an ex, do the same thing, especially in front of the kids or especially in front of your parents. Don't say bad things about the ex or the in-laws. Honour the relationships that you're in and give compliments. Be honest about how much you love that person and let them know. Honour the relationship, honour the humanity of the person. To me, that's one of the most powerful things that we can do to make a relationship healthy. I love that one. It's probably one of my favourites. For much of our married life, I have been really intentional about the people I choose to share my feelings with. Yeah, you only tell people how much awfulness I get up to if they're very close to you, right? (laughs) (laughs) Because people's opinion of other people is made up of lots of different opinions. Yeah, And obviously, in an intimate relationship, you deal with things all the time that are are intimate and private and the more you share those things with other people they have a really skewed view of who you are Mm. and I've always been really intentional about that because I don't want anybody to see you in a skewed light because of a difficulty that we're experiencing at any point in time because the reality is all of us do it we all have moments and we and and I think that I don't know if it's the same for men, but I do know that as a woman, it's really good to be able to bounce something off somebody else and kind of get a new perspective. But finding the right people to get perspectives from. And, and doing it in a way that it doesn't turn into a bag out wish yeah, kind of session. That's right. Cause I, and, and so I'm not looking for somebody to actually uh, justify my feelings. What I'm actually wanting is someone who's going to elevate my thoughts. Love it. The next one is that we need to encourage positive illusions. So research by Shelley Taylor and another author, surname Brown, can't remember the first name, looked at this idea that in our lives we host and, and we, we hold all of these positive illusions and relationships are strongest when we believe things that aren't necessarily true but so are very rose-colored good. rose-coloured glasses. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And when we look at our partner, when we look at our children through rose-coloured glasses... <laughs> We have healthier relationships. We hold them in higher esteem, higher regard. Now, this isn't about lying to yourself and fooling yourself. This is just about recognizing that it's so easy to focus on the negatives. They already exist, but could we just focus on the positives a little more? It changes the quality of the relationship when you do that. Yeah, it's interesting. We've talked about this a few times now, the fact that there is a positive and a negative to each attribute. Right. So one of the things that I absolutely love about you is you have got so much energy. You are just (laughs) like an energizer bunny. I know where you're going with this. But at times it is absolutely frustrating, grating, and just drives me to probably anxiety levels (laughs) to the hilt. I love the energy that you bring to the table 99% of the time. But there is every, every now and again, there are times where it's just like, oh my gosh, can we just calm things down, please? And we can so often just focus on that yep. and not recognize that there is so many things about that particular quality that are amazing and bring so much joy into our relationship. So these habits are about our spouses and partners as much as they're about our children. This is the podcast about 
time poor parents and children. Uh, but but you'll note that each of these four things that we've talked about so far also apply to our kids. Are we able to make time? Are we able to laugh? Are we able to honour the relationship and speak positively? Do we harbour those positive illusions? Time's getting the better of us, Mrs. Happy Families, and I've still got a whole lot more of these to go through. Let's put these ones off until our podcast on Thursday. I think that's a great plan. The Happy Families podcast is running out of time very quickly. So if you'd like more, oh, by the way, we would like to know from you. What do you do to build a happier relationship? What are your habits of the happiest relationships? Can you send us a voice memo? We'd love to hear from you. Podcasts at happyfamilies.com.au. Shoot that voice memo through and we'll share your tidbits, your ideas in upcoming podcasts. We are produced, as always, by Justin Rulon from Bridge Media. Craig Bruce is our executive producer. And if you'd like more info about making your family happier, join us at happyfamilies.com.au. Listener.